Let's say a patient has had uh, 10 chemotherapy treatments, of which five remain in the body. We now give very rapid, intensive detoxifying, and all these five chemos come out of the cell tissues, wherever they're hiding, into the bloodstream, into the liver, all at once. Now, five treatments is an overdose, isn't it? The doctors don't give you five treatments at once. It's a huge overdose. And we have found the hard way that that can cause tremendous danger and trouble. Twice patients ended in intensive care after chemo with the castor oil. So we've cut out, at least for the time being, the castor oil for chemo patients. Because now we have to detoxify them more gently, more slowly, so that all these chemo treatments don't hit them at the same time. Slowly, they detoxify. It is more difficult to deal with such patients. They've had additional poisons pumped into their system. They have more damage done. It's a bone marrow damage. It's immune system damage. The kidneys are damaged. The liver is damaged. All of this caused by the chemo. And it is harder to rebuild. So we are always very grateful when the patients have not had any or very little. It's better a little than a lot. It's still bad, but it's better. Each chemo treatment they didn't get, we are grateful for. Much easier to deal with, okay? So the chemo patients are not put on as drastic and as dramatic and intensive a therapy. They get a less intensive treatment. No castor oil, they get less uh, potassium and enzymes and thyroid than the other patients, okay? So this is very important for anybody who wants to do the therapy at home after chemo treatment. They has to be very cautious because of this intensive detoxifying. Another thing we do with chemo patients, we give them a little vitamin C. The vitamin C helps to neutralize some of these chemicals. Non-chemo patients do not get vitamin C. There's very adequate vitamin C in all the fresh fruits and vegetables and juices, and giving vitamin C under those circumstances, according to Dr. Freeman Cope, who was MD as well as a PhD in biochemistry, is not a good idea, because vitamin C can be an enzyme inhibitor. It's a, uh, <clears throat> it's a, uh, not an activator, but it's a, uh, um, let's see, it's a detoxifying agent, but it's not an oxidizer, it's a reducing agent. And we do need to oxidize, and uh, the cancer cells die with oxidation. So giving a lot of vitamin C is unwise. We do not use vitamin C in our regular patients, only chemo patients. So there are some adjustments that have to be made. Then we also make adjustments, for instance, in uh, diabetic patients. We had a very interesting patient who came to us, 300 pounds. Uh, he not only was very young, 46 years old, at 38 years of age, he had already had a massive heart attack, uh, partly because of his overweight. He was left, of course, with high blood pressure, with heart damage, with very severe diabetes, and uh, he was uncontrolled with insulin, with drugs. His blood sugar ran 240 to 400. You may know that it shouldn't run much over 100, 110, 120. That's about the maximum. But his glucose was running to up to 400 with drugs. So uh, he had a lot of problems. He was also on gout medication. Now, what is gout? Gout is caused by the inability of the body to properly digest and eliminate proteins. So what happens, some of the intermediate end products of protein digestion, the uric acid, is not properly excreted, so it rises in the blood. And when uric acid rises too much, it finally falls out in crystals. And the uric acid crystals are tiny, tiny little a needle-like crystals that love to go into the, uh, into the cartilage and the joints 
So they raise all kinds of heck in the joint. Naturally, the answer is cut out the proteins. But that's not what orthodox medicine does. They give you a drug to reduce, uh, to reduce the gout problem. But what happens, the drug is kidney damaging. So we've seen a gout patient who'd had gout for many years, who was given the gout medication and ended up with kidney cancer. Now this patient with all these problems also had gout and was getting gout medication. And if he didn't take it one day, he'd have a terrible attack. Well, he came to us being a diabetic and being tremendously overweight and so on. And yet we gave him the juices. Now, we cut down a little bit on the carrot juice because that's higher in sugar. We gave him more of the green juices. Uh, we gave him nowhere near as much thyroid. He wasn't a cancer patient. He got very little thyroid. And we had to deal with this very gingerly, very cautiously. And we did make one other adjustment because of this tremendous uh, diabetic problem. Uh, we gave him a glucose tolerance factor, a chromium picolinate. Uh, 200 micrograms uh, twice a day. Now, this man drinking 13 glasses of juice a day plus having the three full vegetarian Gerson meals lost a pound a day. Furthermore, within five weeks, the uncontrolled diabetes was gone and his blood sugar without further drugs was 105 without insulin. Furthermore, from the first day on the Gerson therapy, he cut off the gout medication. We don't give any proteins, any animal proteins which cause the problems. The, the vegetarian proteins are not difficult to digest, cause no problem. From the first day he was off the gout medication, no further gout attacks. By the time five weeks were up, his blood sugar was normal, he had lost 35 pounds, and he was at the clinic about two and a half months. By that time, he had lost very close to, two, to 100 pounds. He was now down to a very manageable 200. He was six foot two, so 200 he could carry. He was a little bit chubby, but he could carry fairly normally. His heart was better. His blood pressure was getting toward normal. His diabetes was cleared. His weight was under control. Everything was going away like it was supposed to. The gout, of course, was gone. Now comes the real kicker to the story. This man was the son of one of our long-term recovered pancreas cancer patients. His father came to us eight years ago, seven years earlier before he started the treatment, seven years with advanced pancreas cancer, he was given three months to live. He had had the father, three heart attacks. He had arthritis and he was on the therapy and he recovered. And the son, seeing this, knowing about it, lets himself get into this kind of condition where he was this close to death with his uncontrolled diabetes, heart problem and this enormous obesity. Now that's discouraging to us. That's rather scary, that people really let themselves get to that point where that close to death, when they know what can be done and how it should be done. That's frightening, okay? Just to give you an idea, though, of the tremendous complications that we can and do deal with. But you see, this kind of a patient, I would discourage from trying to do the Gerson therapy at home. We had to do a lot of adjustment and a lot of, you know, specific things for his specific problems, all right? Of course he got the castor oil enemas, of course he got the various coffee enemas and all the other things, and he got the juices including the, uh, the carrot juice, which is relatively sweet in spite of the diabetic problem. The diabetes is not a problem of sugar. It's a problem of cholesterol. Blockage of the insulin receptors in the cell, the cholesterol. Now, there is such a thing as juvenile diabetes. Now, juvenile diabetes is a different thing altogether. 
Juvenile diabetes is usually